traders, my name is Marco Mayer from Trading Educators and this video is going to be the first part of the position sizing series. So the goal of this is to give you some insights about position sizing. It's just going to cover the basics, it's going to give you an approach that works pretty well for me in most cases and that's not too complicated and that you can apply to your own trading. So first we're going to talk about what is position sizing at all and then we're going to define and look at some basic indicators that I tend to use a lot, which is the range, the average range, the true range, the average true range, and what's called the initial risk or R. And in the past, I've written an article about this already that you can find here on tradingeducators.com slash measuring performance, where I explain pretty much the same stuff in written form. So let's jump right into it. Position sizing, what is it? So position sizing is part of money and risk management. It's about how many shares, contracts, slots, units, depending on what you're trading, to buy, sell, to come as close as possible to match our desired risk. So if we have decided, okay, we want to risk 1% per trade, then how much units do we have to buy to come close to that risk, considering um, the trade we're going to put on? And this is a very important topic, in my opinion. It really can make the difference between a okay, pretty good performance and a really great performance. It's also going to decrease your drawdowns if used correctly. But don't believe the hype. Position sizing won't turn a losing strategy into a winning strategy. It's the same as going to the casino. If you are not the casino or you have some other very special edge there, you're going to lose your money. It doesn't matter how you bet around, how you do the position sizing if you now place two chips and the next time you place one chip and then you play three chips, over the long run you're going to lose your money because you have no edge. And the same is true in trading. So position sizing is there to get the most out of your edge, but if you don't have one, it's not going to help you. So let's start with the first definition here. And I'm really going to build this up from the ground so everyone can follow, hopefully, and um, it's not going to get too complicated. So stick with me. First of all, we're going to look at what's the range. And the range simply is the high minus the low of a price bar. Could be a daily price bar, could be a one hour price bar, five minute, or it could be a yearly bar. Range simply is high minus the low. It doesn't matter if you use bar charts like here or candlestick charts like here. Take the high, subtract the low. And in this case, we're going to get uh, 85 ticks. Now the next thing you might want to do is to know, okay, how much is that range in your currency? So let's say you have a US dollar account. Let's say you trade a market like the Euro future, which is in US dollar. High minus low, you figure out, okay, it's 130.50, the low is 112.50, so your range is going to be 100 ticks. You simply take these 100 ticks and divide it by the tick size of the contract. Now, in the euro future, this is 0 0.00005. In the e-mini S&P, for example, it would be 0 0.25. Now, once you have the ticks, all you have to do is multiply that with the tick value of the contract, in this case, $6.25, and you get $1,250. So the next step would be to, to calculate the average range. And the average range would be, for example, the average of each range of the last three days or the last three bars. So you would take the range of the last three price bars, sum them up and then divide it by three, the range of each one. So in this case, we have 50 ticks here, we have 100 here, 150 here. And if we divide that 300 by three, we get 0 0.01000, so 100 ticks. Same thing if we convert that to the currency. We now know that in the last three days, on average, prices move by $1,250. That gives us a pretty good idea about the volatility that's going on there and what kind of movement we can expect. In other words, it's quite unlikely that on the next day, the price is only going to move by $50 and it's also quite unlikely that it's going to move by $10,000. Doesn't mean it can't happen. There are days where the next bar's range is like 10 times as much as the average range and it can be also very small especially around holidays but this gives us a pretty good idea about what it's probably going to be 
And obviously this helps us a lot to get an idea about our risk in, in a specific market on a specific time frame. Compared to the range, the true range is the maximum of the high minus the low, so the range, or the absolute value of the high minus the close of the last price bar, or the low minus the close of the last price bar. Again, absolute value, so it doesn't matter if it goes up or down, it's going to measure the difference between the two. And out of these three values, it's going to take the one that's the maximum value, though the highest value, which considers then gaps. And that is very helpful, especially in markets where you have a lot of gaps, and especially if you want to get an idea of the volatility over a longer period of time. Now, compared to the average range I showed on the last slide, where it just took the simple moving average, just the simple mean, um, Wilder used the exponential moving average, or he used one exponential moving average that he somehow came up on his own. What this does is it simply weights the last periods higher than the older periods. So when there's a sudden change in volatility, this one's going to adapt more quickly because it's an exponential one. And that's also what you should use um, for the average range, actually. So when you plot your indicator in there, make sure you're going to use an exponential moving average because it's going to adapt more quickly. One little tip for those of you using Genesis Straight Navigator because I stumbled over that myself. For some reason the average true range indicator in Trade Navigator isn't the average true range indicator but it's a, just a simple moving average of the true range. So it doesn't use the exponential one. If you want the real one you have to use the indicators called the wildest average true range. Now, do you have to know all of that actually? Can't you just plug in the average true range with 10 bars and then use it? And of course you could, but in my opinion, if you don't really understand what an indicator does, even if it's one that's as simple as the true range indicator, you will have trouble using it because you're not going to understand what it does and what it's going to exactly show you. So if you use any indicator, make sure you really understand it. So the last part is going to be the initial risk or the R concept. And the initial risk or 1R simply is what you're going to risk from your entry to your exit point within a specific trade. So here the entry price would be at 112.24. The initial stop loss would be at 111.44, which gives us a risk of 80 ticks. And these 80 ticks would be our initial risk. So 1R in this case equals 80 ticks. Now what this allows you to do is to take your trades, look at them not in how much dollars you made, because a trade where you maybe made $1,000 doesn't necessarily have to be better considering the risk you took to a trade where you maybe just made $200. So coming back to our example, the entry to profit target range in this case would be 186 ticks. So in this case, we would have a profit target of 2.32R. So we have more than two times the initial risk as a profit target. Doesn't have to be a good thing, doesn't have to be a bad thing, that's just what it is. And measuring things in Rs is one of the best ways I found out to measure performance. So I hope this makes sense. Again, um, you can find an article about this if you go to this website here. How to actually use this to come up with the correct position sizing what I tend to use and what I believe makes sense I'm going to explain in the next part of the series. Until then, I wish you a lot of good trades. If you haven't done so, join us at tradingeducators.com. Also, if you haven't done so, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash tradingeducators. This way you can make sure you see any new videos we post right away. So thanks for watching and see you next time.